Cascader has an incredible built-in video mocap feature and the best part is that it's completely free. All you need is a video, your character and you can quickly create animation drafts. First, I'll guide you through how to get started with the tool, then I'll demonstrate how you can extend an existing animation and utilize Cascader's tools like the interval edit mode and auto physics to enhance the final result. Before we dive in, we will need a good video reference. Currently only MP4 files with H.264 encoding are supported, and it's really important to have the same frame rate as your animation. You can adjust the animation frame rate in the timeline settings if needed. And since this type of mocap transforms 2D image sequences into a 3D animation, try to make the AI's job as easy as you can. So make sure that the video is stable with no camera motion, minimize motion blur, wear standout no baggy clothes, all body parts should be visible during the whole video, and avoid moving straight towards or away from the camera. A really good source for high quality video references is the Motion Actor YouTube channel. First I will be using this video from their channel. Make sure that the character in your scene was rigged using the quick rigging tool so you have auto posing available. And then you need to import your reference by going to file, import, video reference, or even you can just simply drag and drop a video file to your scene. Here you can specify which part of the animation you want to import so you can just slide the slider or type your values here. I know that I only want a small fraction of the video from these frames. The imported video will be converted into an image sequence, so you need to define a path where the images will be saved. Just make sure that this folder has writing privileges, otherwise you would get an error. And I can now click import, and the image sequence is generated and it will show up in your scene. And to keep your scene organized, consider renaming the imported mesh. And I also like to give the reference its own track. Now that you have your reference video prepared in the scene, we can start the mocap process. First, we will need to select the video reference in your scene. You can do this either in the outliner here or directly in the viewport if you have the shaded mesh selectable option checked out. Choose the interval on the timeline where you want the animation to be applied, so this reference was around 150 or something less frames. We can check out where it ends, something like this. You just need to make sure that you have enough frames selected. And you can see the number of selected frames in this black border. Then we will need to click the mocap button on the toolbar, which is this person with an image. If you are doing this for the first time, a package needs to be downloaded. You will need internet connection for this, but you only have to do this once, and then you can use it offline as well. This package is downloaded in the AppData for Cascader resources folder, so if you don't need it anymore, you can delete it from here. And when the download is finished, you will get an estimation how long the mocap process will take, and once you accept it, you will just need to wait until it finishes. And we have our motion capture ready. I'm quite surprised this turned out this well, considering that the hand is obscured for a couple of frames here. But this is a great starting point to create a more polished animation from this. Now let's look at another example where I will be extending the backflip animation from the sample scenes. This animation ends when the character stands on one leg on the pillar and I wanted to do something from here. And the first thing that came to mind was the signature move from Karate Kid and I want to implement this technique. Mocap. I will remove the last couple of keyframes because there is not much change here and I want to blend immediately to the mocap animation. So first I will choose my reference, I will import the entire animation, choose the folder where the image sequence should be created and just import the animation. Let's take a quick look at the reference. So this was recorded in my living room with my phone, so it's not the best lighting condition. And as you can see during the kick there is a lot of motion blur which will be a problem later, but this can be easily fixed. Currently the video reference and the animation starts at the same point, but if we want to create the mocap after the current animation we need to delay the reference. 
So we need to select the mesh and then under the texture container behavior, we can change the start frame to start right after the current animation, which will be frame 101. And I will extend the timeline so we have enough frames for the mocap and select the interval and the reference and we can start the mocap process as we did before. This will take a couple of minutes, but thanks to editing, it's already ready. The most obvious problem with this is that the character is at the middle of our scene with the mocap animation, and also the kick is not registered as expected. But before we do any cleanup, I need to make sure that the character is positioned correctly during the whole animation, and the best way to fix this is to use the interval edit mode to move the character to the correct position. So I will turn on ghost mode to see where the previous animation ends and using interval edit mode with stepped option enabled I will position the character to the correct place. To make it easier to position I will split the view and use front and side view at the same time to position the character. My goal is to match the position of the ball of the foot because that's the fixed part and we will be able to blend to this position so you don't have to be exactly accurate but try to be as close as possible. I want to get rid of the feet sliding around and Cascader has a couple of tools for this. The first one I will use is the Fulcrum Cleanup tool. I only want to use it on the selected intervals so I will keep interval edit mode enabled and I will also select the point of the feet to see the motion path to see what changes. And then when I press the button for the Fulcrum Cleanup you can see that the motion path of the feet just shrunk down so there is much less motion there. It's already much better but there is still a lot of motions and now I will use the copy tool to completely fix the feet in place. I won't need interval edit mode anymore and I will zoom the timeline to this part to make it more visible. I will go to the last frame of the original animation, select the point controllers of the feet and press Ctrl C to copy its position. Then I need to select the interval where I want to paste this feet position which is until the jump starts and then I can go to edit and paste to interval or use the shortcut Ctrl Alt V and now the feet is exactly at the same place until the character jumps. I also want to make sure that the character lands on the pillar so I will need to move the frame where the character lands to the correct position using again interval edit mode but with bezier option. I have the interval of the jump selected so the first frame is when the character leaves the pillar and the last frame is when it contacts. And using the character center of mass from the last frame of the jump I can position it and it kind of blends. It's not physically correct but we will use auto physics later to correct this jump. So now the problem is that the character suddenly moves to the previous position after that interval that we selected. So I will now use the copy tool again to fix this. I need to extend the timeline again so we have enough frames and I will move away this interval that we will need to copy. So I have this one selected and with middle mouse I can move it away. So I will need to copy this part of the animation relative to the feet. So I have this interval selected and I will need to select all of the controllers and set the pivot point to the feet. And I want to copy the animation in global mode but relative to the, our pivot point so I have relative enabled. And press Ctrl Shift C this is the option to copy the whole interval and then select the interval at the end of the animation. Just make sure you have enough frames. Go to the first frame and press Ctrl Shift V. And this pasted the animation that we had before just exactly at the same position as it should be. So I can get rid of this part of the animation now by pressing Alt F twice. I want to use the physics tools mainly to correct the jump but also generally improve the animation but I only want to apply physics to this interval of the mocap animation so I have this interval selected 
and under physics settings I will enable work on interval and then I can activate auto physics. I will also remove the ghost offset to see it more accurately and as you can see the character is more balanced during the whole interval and the jump is more accurate. So now I can apply the physics changes to the whole interval. I also want to make sure that the character seamlessly blends from the original animation to the mocap animation and for this I will select an interval where I want this blending to happen which will be the first couple of frames of the mocap and using interval edit mode with bezier option I can copy the pose from the original animation to the interval. So to copy the entire pose I will use box mode, select all of the controllers and press ctrl C. I will disable relative mode because here I only want to blend in complete global mode. And selecting the first frame of the selected interval I can press ctrl V and the pose is gradually pasted during the selected interval. This makes the entire transition very smooth. And this method is really handy to blend between animations. I will also move the entire animation two frames back, so the last frame of the original animation will be the same as the first frame of the mocap animation. Now let's pause for a moment and see what we already achieved. So the character does the backflip and lands, and immediately blends into the mocap animation seamlessly. There is still a lot of issues, the knee is jumping around, the kick is not there, but we can fix that now. Now let's add the kick to the animation. First I will move the reference closer to the character, this can be done similarly as we did before, enabling interval edit mode in step mode and move the reference closer to the character. Now let's add the kick, I will focus this part of the timeline and I also will extend the animation tracks to work only on the right leg. First I will identify the first frame of the kick, it's the chamber, then when the foot is extended, so the kicking position, and the re-chamber when the leg pulls back. I will mark these frames with the flag option so I can clearly see on the timeline. And what I want to do is to replace the keyframes between these smart frames with interpolation. You can do this manually by pressing Alt F on the selected interval. Or I made a tool that you can download for free which removes all unflagged keyframes either on the entire animation or if you type true here it removes only on the selected interval. And now I can create the kicking pose on the middle keyframe here. I will extend the leg and point the toes and then I will set interpolation with FK options and the kick is already correct. I will also add the extension frame using the twin machine if I can find it. Using inverse forward inertia I will add an extension frame and push it in local mode with the twin machine. And we already have quite a nice kick just in a couple of seconds. I think kicks generally look better if the toes are pointed, so I can do this using again the interval edit mode with Bezier option. So I will select a couple of frames where I want to point the toes and activate interval edit mode. Then if I rotate the feet in local mode, it will rotate the entire motion path, so it looks kind of weird. What we want to do is to rotate it in every frame around this pivot point. So we can activate the moving pivot option and this will correctly point the toes. And we can do the same after the kick, just with longer interval. And now let's take a look at the animation with the kick added. The last thing I want to show you is how to remove the jitter of the knee. We can see in the motion pad there are a couple of sudden jumps that we need to remove and we can do this similarly as we did with the kick. I will create a new track just for the limb direction controller so our changes only affect the knee. And now as we did before I replace the keyframes with interpolation and this will make the transition happen smoothly instead of abruptly jumping into another position. So just select the interval, remove all of the keyframes with Alt F, 
then set a correct interpolation. You can very quickly do this on the entire interval, so you can quickly get rid of any kind of flicker like this. There is also another video about motion capture cleanup on the official Cascader channel. I highly recommend you check it out because there are a lot of great informations there also. I'm really impressed how good the motion capture tool got in Cascader and I hope you learned something and you can use motion capture to speed up your animation workflow in Cascader. See you in the next one. Bye.